the stepmother. And then he had an idea. Thoughtfully, he climbed back up the stairs. There stood the Almira, with its smell of new wood. Without hesitating, he opened the two bottom doors, which he could easily reach because they were at his height. He took hold of one door and forced it back, further and further, until the wood broke and the door fell to the ground with a loud crash. The second door soon followed the first. To reach the upper two doors, he got a chair and climbed on it. It was more difficult this time, but he pushed as hard as he could until the third door landed on the ground with an even bigger crash. He waited for a moment to see whether anyone would come to investigate, but he wasn't really worried. They, the servants, couldn't stop him. Wasn't he the young master? Anyway, they wouldn't want to stop him. Not at all. They'd be delighted with the trouble he was causing the new woman. He smiled nastily. Wouldn't she be wild? He imagined her return. This time, she'd really get mad. She'd hit him and scream at him, and then his father would get rid of her once and for all. With this happy thought, he turned back to the Almira and finally managed to break the fourth door off. Carefully, he replaced the chair and left the broken doors where they had fallen. Then he decided to play a game in his room. There would be enough time to hide when he heard the car. She was coming up the stairs. Lakshman was lying flat on the floor of his room, looking through the narrow space under his door. He could hear the changing sound of her footsteps as she came higher and higher, and he held his breath when she finally stopped. She stopped for quite some time. Then she called, not him, but the servant. She asked, who has done this, Somapala? Somapala, who had not seen the broken Almira before, gasped and said, I don't know. There was another pause, and she said something Lakshman couldn't hear. Then she went into her bedroom. That was too much for Lakshman. After all his hard work, he jumped up from the floor ran through the doors and burst into her room without knocking. She was standing by the mirror, examining her face, and his eyes met hers in the mirror. He screamed, You want to know who did it? Well, I did. I did it. His face was red under the brown skin, and his eyes very black shining with the light of battle. His arms hung by his sides, his hands tightly closed. She turned slowly. You did it, Lakshman. You. She looked down at him from her great height. Her fingers were playing with the household keys she was holding. That's really too bad, Lakshman. Breaking the baby's cupboard. We had to pay a lot of money for it. He almost laughed. The stupid woman. What was the point in breaking something cheap? He waited for her fury to break, preparing himself for the punishment, looking forward to it almost with pleasure. But it didn't come. She just stood there and looked at him calmly. Then she said, That's really too bad, Lakshman. I thought you were a sensible sort of boy. She sighed. So now we have to ask the workmen to repair the damage. Quite an unnecessary bother and cost. 
she walked towards the baby's room. Lakshman had a terrible feeling of disappointment, worse than he had ever experienced before. Wildly, he ran after her and asked urgently, But aren't you going to punish me? Punish you? She appeared surprised. Punish you? Oh, no. There's no point in that, because that's what you want, isn't it? She looked him straight in the eye. No, Lakshman, I am not going to punish you, only... She hesitated for a moment. About the repairs, you are going to pay for them, Lakshman, out of your bicycle money. That's fair, don't you think? She opened the door of the baby's room, walked through, and firmly shut it behind her. Lakshman stared at the closed door. The sun was shining outside, and little gold bits of dust were dancing in the sunlight. The blood had left his face, and he stood there, wide-eyed and silent. Then he walked out of her room, past the four broken Almara doors on the floor, and down the stairs. His head was bent as he went slowly down, his old shirt hanging out over the two small blue trousers. He heard the door of the baby's room opening. The woman was looking down at him from the top of the stairs, but he pretended not to see and continued going down without stopping. She said, Lakshman, pause. Lakshman, we can come to an arrangement. He did not look up. But there was no longer any sharpness in her voice. Instead, there was a warm note in it that the child did not fail to notice. She said, You help the workman repair the cupboard, and I'll pay half the cost. Agreed? His eyes were hot with tears. The bloody woman, he whispered to himself. The bloody, bloody woman. But he slowed down, and as he reached the bottom of the stairs, she heard him begin to whistle. Agreed, he shouted, and ran quickly out of sight.